Assalamu alaikum. Uh, there's a sister here who wants to know the method of uh, salah, is it the same for the man and the woman? Same for the Shafi and the Hanafi? The sister has a question that is the method of offering salah for the man and woman the same, for the Shafi or Hanafi the same? Our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number one. The Prophet said, pray as you see me pray. The Prophet did not say that the woman should pray separately or the men should pray separately. There's a hadith, again in Sahih Bukhari, volume number one in the book of Salah, that the Sahabiyas, they prayed the same way as the men prayed. There's no different type of praying for men and women. You should pray the same as the Prophet prayed, irrespective of whether you are a man or a woman. I am aware that there are books available in the market in India and throughout the world of different schools of thought that the style of praying for women is different because they are seen and the men is different. There is no such Sahih Hadith. For reply in Islam always, your answer should be backed up with Quran and Sahih Hadith. Always, Quran and Sahih Hadith. So whenever you give a reference, any scholar, let it be the biggest scholar in the world. If he gives the answer, there should be proof, quotation from the Quran and Hadith. Ask him for proof. There is not a single Sahih Hadith. There is no verse in the Quran which says that the styles for offering Salah is different for the men and women. I am aware that scholars of their own view, they said, okay, fine, because women should be protected, they should pray differently. These are their thinking. But the Prophet never said that. We should pray as the Prophet prayed. Regarding the style for offering Salah as the Hanafi style and the Shafi style, I am aware that it does differ. The Hanafis, they keep their hand below the navel. The Shafis keep their hand on the chest. They do takbir, they say amin loudly. Again, my first answer. Around Sahih Bukhari, the Prophet said in volume number one in the book of Salah, pray as you see me pray. And all the four ayamas, Imam Shafi, Imam Ayyad ibn Hanbal, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, all the great four ayamas said that if you find any of my fatwa which goes against Allah and His Rasul, throw my fatwa on the wall. I am aware Abu Hanifa, may Allah be pleased with him. He was a great scholar, I respect him, I love him. People say that he said that when you offer salah, keep your hand below the navel. There's a hadith in Abu Dawood. If you read volume number one, book of salah, which says that the Prophet kept his hand below his navel when he offered salah, but this is a Zaif hadith. Immediately the next hadith says, which is a Sai hadith, that the Prophet kept his hand above the navel. There are other Sai hadith in Sai ibn Khazaimah, which says that the Prophet kept his hand on the chest. So when there are Sahih Hadith saying the Prophet kept on the chest, the Hadith below the navel is Zaif. So the right way to offer Salah, keep it on the chest. That doesn't mean everything Imam Shafi is right or Imam Abu Hanifa, may Allah be pleased with them both, that they're wrong. See, they were great scholars. We respect them, they're great ayamas. But we fail to realize that at that time, the Hadith one compiled during the life of the Prophet, the Quran was compiled. There was no question at all, under his own supervision. But the hadith one compiled, they start being compiled later on, 50 years, 100 years, 150 years later on. So these scholars came earlier. And because they didn't have all the Sai hadith with them, the fatwas that they gave were based on the knowledge that they had. I don't think that Abu Hanifa, may Allah be pleased, made a mistake. What he did because that Sai hadith didn't reach him. So maybe according to me, the Zaif hadith reached him and he may have said, keep your hand below the navel. The Sai hadith may have reached Imam Shafi. He said that keep your hand on the chest. Again, Sahih Bukhari says, poem number one in the book of Salah, that you have to rafatain. So rafatain, the Prophet said, not because Imam Shafi is saying I'm following it, because my Prophet said it. Now in Wudu, there's a verse in the Quran in Surah Maida, chapter number five, that it says that when the woman touches, the Wudu breaks. The Arabic word is Masa, coming from Namasa, which means touch. According to Imam Shafi, may Allah be pleased with him, he says that if the woman touches, the Wudu breaks. Imam Abu Hanifa said, if the woman touches a man who is in wudu, wudu does not break. Now the Arabic verse of the Quran says, La masa, if the woman touches, wudu breaks. But there are two meanings of masa. One is a sexual touch and the other is a physical touch. So Imam Shafi, may Allah be pleased with him, he took it as a physical touch. Imam Abu Hanifa, he took it as a sexual touch. So both had a difference of opinion. But when you go to Sunnah Abu Dawood, one number one, in the Hadith of Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. The Prophet was in wudu, he kissed her. And the Prophet, without doing wudu again, went for salah. There's another hadith in Sahih Bukhari, in the book of Salah, volume number one. The Hazrat Aisha was sleeping, the Prophet put the leg and offered salah. So this proves that physical touch does not break the wudu. So here, Abu Hanifa, may Allah be pleased with him, is right. 
and Imam Shafi, not that he made a mistake willfully, that Hadith didn't reach him. So all were great scholars, and all the Imma said that if you find any of my fatwa which goes against Allah and Rasul, then throw my fatwa on the wall. So I say that I am a Pakka Hanafi. I, Dr. Zakir Nagar, a Pakka Hanafi. Why? Abu Hanifa maybe gave the fatwa, keep down below the navel while offering salah, but the Sai Hadith says keep on the chest. So I have offering salah, I keep off my chest. I am a Pakka Hanafi. Imam Shafi said, if you find any of my fatwa, which goes against Salah and Rasul, throw my fatwa on the wall. So Imam Shafi said that if the woman touches the man in wudu, wudu breaks. But Sai Hadith says, wudu does not break. So my wudu does not break if a woman unintentionally touches me. So because I have thrown the fatwa of Imam Shafi on the wall, he said that I am a 